Millie and Molly were on their way to the park to take some pretty pictures when they heard a terrible sound. Ah! Ah! Aunt Maud! Had Aunt Maud fallen down? Or broken her leg? Or even had a heart attack? Aunt Maud, are you all right? No, I am not all right. Someone or something has nibbled my prize lettuce. And that wasn't all. Oh! Oh! And they've been at my prize winning carrots too! Soon, Mr. Oddbottom from the town council was there. See? Just look at the nibbles and this carrot ruined! How am I supposed to win a prize with that? Yes, Aunt Maud, I have observed that some element of pestilence has set upon your agricultural produce. What did he say? No idea. Both my carrot and my lettuce. Well, what are you going to do about it? Under Council Bylaw 125B, if once a council official has identified the offending pest vermin or stray, the official has the right to detain, apprehend or otherwise hold said pest vermin or stray and has complete authority to determine whatever course of action may be necessary to prevent further transgressions. So, you're going to catch the culprit and stop it from eating my vegetables? That's what I said. Oh! Well, the pest could be getting in over here, Mr Underpants. It's odd bottom. Then, Millie and Molly had a nasty thought. What if it's someone's pet that ate Aunt Maud's vegetables? Someone we know. I am not a cruel person, Mr Funnybottom, but I want whatever this is taken care of permanently. I concur. And it's odd bottom. We should try to find out who ate Aunt Maud's vegetables before they do. So, like a pair of detectives, Millie and Molly set about looking for evidence. Look, whatever it is has left a little footprint in the soil. The footprint has four toes. <gasps> Marmalade has four toes. <gasps> so does Tomcat. Millie and Molly were worried their precious cats might have been the vegetable nibblers that Aunt Maud wanted taken care of permanently. Here comes the picture of the footprint. Now let's have a look at your paw, Tomcat. No, this isn't a cat's paw print. Both have four toes, but the middle of the paw is really different. But if the cats hadn't eaten the vegetables... I knew you were a good boy. Who had? Was it Humphrey's dog? Zoldan's got four toes too. But it's not the same as the photo either. His paw's too big anyway. Well, I know exactly what made that paw print. What? Aliens from the planet Neptune. Humphrey, why would an alien come all the way from Neptune to eat Aunt Maud's vegetables? It's a scientific fact that there are no vegetables on Neptune, so they must have been hungry. The girls weren't sure what they'd do if they found the animal that ate Aunt Maud's lettuce and carrots. But they had a bad feeling about what Mr Oddbottom might do if he found the animal first. Steady, Roger. Jack's goat liked lettuce and carrots and almost everything else. But the print didn't match. No. And Miss Blythe's budgie liked lettuce too. But the little bird's claws didn't match either. No. And Chloe's horse loved carrots. But, well, that was just silly. Definitely not! <laughs> Millie and Molly were starting to feel relieved that none of their friends' pets were guilty of eating Aunt Maud's vegetables. Hi, Elizabeth. Can we look at Mr Cottonbottom's paws, please? Is this about Aunt Maud's garden? Yeah. Well, I'm sure it wasn't Mr Cottonbottom. Do you think Mr Cottonbottom is related to Mr Oddbottom? <laughs> Molly, what is it? What's wrong? This is the same as Mr Cottonbottom's paw print. <gasps> and rabbits love lettuce and carrots. It must have been your rabbit in Aunt Maud's garden. It couldn't have been. You won't tell Mr Oddbottom, will you? Tell me what. <gasps> A rabbit hutch. Hmm? Mr. Oddbottom went to see where Elizabeth's rabbit was kept to find more evidence. You can see that Mr. Cotton 
Green Button can't get out. He couldn't have eaten Aunt Maud's vegetables. And he's a very nice, friendly rabbit. Would you like to pat him, Mr. Oddbottom? No, I wouldn't, thank you. Don't you like animals? I like all animals, plants, insects and fungi. You're not going to take Mr. Cotton Bottom away, are you? Well... Uh, excuse me. Hello? Uh, that's Odd Bottom, Aunt Maud. Yes, well... Well, I see, but... Well, I don't think there's any need to shout. Hello? Hello? Well, Elizabeth, it seems while I've been looking at your Oryctolagus caniculus, another one has been attacking Aunt Maud's produce. Oh! So it wasn't Mr. Cotton Bottom. Yay! Once it was discovered the culprit was a rabbit, it wasn't hard for Mr. Oddbottom to set the right trap. It's so cute! Fiddlesticks! That creature is a vandal, eating my prized vegetables, the very thought of it! He looks tame. Maybe someone owns him. Yeah, and loves him, and is missing him. What are you going to do with him, Mr. Oddbottom? Mr. Oddbottom? I'll convey this Oryctolagus caniculus to the veterinarian to be checked over and have her keep it. But if no one claims it after one week, then it will be placed in enclosure 211B. What does that mean? Well, uh, it means that the council can't afford to feed and house abandoned animals forever. It's a pity there are irresponsible owners around that force us to do something about it. <gasps> Millie and Molly thought they knew what this meant for the poor little rabbit. So for the next week, Millie and Molly tried hard to find the little rabbit's owner. They put up signs at the park, at school, even on the council building where Mr Oddbottom worked. And every day after school, Millie and Molly ran to the vets to see if anyone had claimed the little rabbit. Bet this isn't as nice as Aunt Maud's lettuce. <laughs> Don't worry, little one. Somebody will come for you. But as the week went on, Millie and Molly wondered if the little rabbit did have an owner at all. They tried to make a backup plan, just in case. I'm sorry, Millie. We couldn't possibly look after another pet. It wouldn't be fair to Marmalade. And it wouldn't be fair to us. There just isn't enough room, I'm afraid. OK. On the last day of the week, Millie and Molly raced to see if someone, anyone, had come to claim the little rabbit. I'm afraid no one's claimed the little rabbit, so Mr Oddbottom has already collected it. No! Millie and Molly ran to the town council building to find Mr. Oddbottom. But Mr. Oddbottom had already left for the day. They had to find where Mr. Oddbottom lived. There's only one Oddbottom in the whole town. He lives near my place. Let's hope it's our Oddbottom. It has to be. How many Oddbottoms are there? What if Mr. Oddbottom's not here? What if this isn't Mr. Oddbottom's house? Oh, what is he doing to that poor little rabbit? Can I be of assistance? Please, Mr. Oddbottom! Please, please, please don't hurt the little rabbit! Please don't! Hurt a little rabbit? What on earth do you mean? It's the end of the week, and you said no one claimed him. You... I'd do something about it. And I have. <gasps> In enclosure 211B, where I keep all the homeless rabbits. I don't understand. We thought... Millie and Molly didn't know what to think. There were animals and enclosures all around Mr Oddbottom's backyard. 
lots of animals everywhere. All these poor animals have been abandoned. What else could I do? <laughs> They're all mine now. Really? You mean you look after all these animals by yourself? Well, What's then... going on out here? Who was it making all that noise at your front door, Mr. Redbottom? It's Odd Bottom. I don't look after the animals all by myself. Some of the neighbours help with vegetable produce they don't think is good enough to win prizes. Well, is someone going to help me feed these animals or what? We will! And Millie and Molly decided that whenever they could, they'd help nice Mr Oddbottom look after all the stray animals that he had adopted.